You can't ever turn down a good new Souls-like, and with Overboarder Studios' upcoming action RPG Timesia, it looks like we're going to have another one of those to dig into very soon. The game has turned heads every time it's been shown off, with genre fans, and Bloodborne enthusiasts in particular, itching to get their hands on it. Thankfully, the game will be out soon, and ahead of its August 18th launch, here we're going to discuss a few key details that you should know about the game. Setting One of the main drivers behind Thymesia's comparisons to Bloodborne is its setting and the gothic horror vibe. The game is set in the Kingdom of Hermes, which was once thriving due to its advancements in alchemy, but the practice came at a catastrophic cost, swallowing the kingdom in chaos. The realm is now crawling with hellish beasts and nightmarish creatures, disease and decay, and the few who survived have locked themselves in. It's all very Yarnum, and if it can make good on its exciting promise, it's going to be a solid setting for the game. Protagonist You play Timesia as Corvus, a mysterious man with a past shrouded in mystery, though he's supposedly the only one who can now pull the kingdom back from the state it finds itself in. Appropriately enough for the kind of game it's trying to be, it's clear that Timesia's story is going to rely heavily on mystery and revealing bits and pieces through lore drops. It remains to be seen how Corvus's own story intertwines with that, though, or how much it intertwines with that. Memories Corvus's past is being used in Timesia as an interesting gameplay mechanic as well. His memories are splintered, and they're scattered all throughout the kingdom. That, of course, means that exploring environments and finding those memories becomes key, because only with those can you understand what's going on and unlock every mystery in the story. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild did something similar, but it remains to be seen if the idea's execution is going to be different in Timesia. Endings Souls-likes are known for having multiple endings more often than not, and given that, and the fact that it seems to be evoking Bloodborne so heavily, it's no surprise that Timesia is going to feature multiple endings as well. Developer Overboarder Studio hasn't talked about exactly how many endings the game will have, but we do know that which ending you get will depend on several factors, such as whether or not you've been able to acquire specific items, and how many of Corvus's memories you were able to find and witness throughout your playthrough. Hopefully there will be enough variation across those endings to make them feel meaningfully different, because that can be a bit of a hard balance to strike. Combat Enough about the game's world and story though, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of the experience, which, like any other Souls-like, is the combat. While Timesia is very heavily reminiscent of Bloodborne in terms of its setting and tone, when it comes to the combat, it's much more similar to something like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, in style, at the very least. Encounters rely largely on fast and frantic melee and ranged attacks, with quite a bit of emphasis placed on dodges and parries. Essentially, it looks significantly faster than the typical Souls-like. Whether or not it's actually fun to play once you get your hands on the controller remains to be seen, though we're certainly keeping our fingers crossed. Plagues Here's the central mechanic in Timesia, or at least the central mechanic in the game's combat system at any rate. The Kingdom of Hermes is ridden with diseases and pestilence, but Corvus has the unique ability to turn them to his advantage and use them as very literal weapons against his foes. Bosses and special enemies will carry different plagues that you'll be able to take for yourself after defeating them, and then use in the form of different weapons, like claws, scythes, and more. It sounds like a novel concept, so hopefully Timesia will be able to execute it well. Raven Another unique ability that Timesia will feature in combat is being able to shift your form. Corvus can turn into a raven during combat, and in this form, he has access to several useful abilities like performing executions, interrupting enemy attacks, throwing dagger-like feathers at foes, and more. There are some important things that haven't been mentioned yet, like whether or not the game will place any kind of a limit on how frequently and freely players will be able to use this ability or if it's going to be used for exploration and traversal purposes as well. If the game gets those details right though, it could be an interesting mechanic. Enemies Enemy design and variety is crucial in any combat-focused game, but that's doubly true for Souls-likes. Boss battles are the bread and butter of this genre, and Timesia seems promising on that front in particular, given its bosses and special foes who carry diseases and use them as weapons. 
From what we've seen out of the game so far, the more regular enemies are going to put up plenty of challenge as well, which of course should work well with the more fast-paced nature of the game's combat. Progression and Build Variety This is another area where Timesia distances itself from Bloodborne. While the latter was famously much less focused on build variety than From Software's previous games had been, Timesia is promising much greater flexibility. According to the developers, players will be able to play in a variety of different ways by being able to upgrade and modify Corvus's movement and abilities in different ways and having multiple plague weapons to use and upgrade. On paper, it sounds like Timesia will allow a much greater degree of freedom in building your character in a variety of different ways, so hopefully there will be enough depth to the progression systems to make good on that promise. PC Requirements when Time Easia launches a few days from now, it'll be available on PS5 and the Xbox Series as well, but many in the PC audience will be glad to know that the game isn't going to be a very demanding game on their platform of choice, from a specs point of view. On minimum requirements, Timesia will need either an Intel Core i5 or an AMD Ryzen 5, along with either a GeForce GTX 950 or Radeon HD 7970 and 8GB of RAM. On recommended settings, meanwhile, the game requires either an Intel Core i7 or AMD Ryzen 7, along with either a GeForce GTX 1060 or a Radeon RX 580 and 16GB of RAM. On either setting, you'll need about 16GB of free storage space. And with that, we reached the end of the video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.